So here's a trick if you want to get on the low bands and don't quite have the space. Well, I guess there's two ways of doing it, isn't there? Right, it's the beginning of the 160 meter dipole project. Now I bought a ton of these from, oh, I can't remember, some wholesaler. They're scaffold, effectively scaffold poles, but, um, but fiberglass. They're quite heavy. I would say that weighs about six kilos, whatever that is in pounds. There's not much bend, which is nice because I'd like to use as a proof of concept, one of these for the six meter boom for a three element Yagi. Although ideally I probably need square section alloy, which would be the same weight, but more rigid. Does it matter if it flexes around? I don't know. So I've gone over, I found some um, 180 grit because uh, I didn't have sheets of sandpaper. I've gone over the whole thing and then I went over it with white spirit and chat GPT tells me I've got to sniff the pole. And if I can detect white spirit, <laughs> it's not ready. Now I'm going to spray in here, right? Which is there's no product. I've got product in boxes, but I haven't got product, you know, um unboxed they seem to have a natural sag so we could move one there it's actually quite handy you know with a natural sag because it means i can turn them upside down when they're on the mast with the three element it would kind of be straight and i've got some paint i can't remember when i got this paint factory color it's white primer because we're gonna Shut up. I'm going to spray these whites. The reason being, ignoring the Yagi in a minute, but the reason for white is that um, against the sky, you can't, white reflects the colours around it. So if it's a blue sky, well, I'm just trying to make the thing disappear. So here's a trick for you, you probably didn't know. Sail, wind surface, sailboard, whatever the hobby is called. You can buy those two parts second hand from about 20 or 30 dollars pounds. And interestingly enough, the inside diameter is just over 48 millimeters. So we're going to find that we'll be able to fit a windsurfing mast over the top of this. And I've got three or four, uh, some metal, some fiberglass, some carbon, I think. I've got cheapest chips over the years. So this being six meters long, and then we put a 4.6 on at the top. That gives us 10 meters, 30, 31 foot or something for the dipole, all right? 160 meter dipole. I might turn it into an 80 as well, all right? Because I do need something fairly low to the ground for 80. So I haven't got a DX antenna for 160. This is a European 160 meters antenna. And I've been shaking for quite a bit because apparently that's what the instructions say. I'm just not quite sure what's going to be a long time since I've used spray paint. I seem to remember it gets rather dusty, doesn't it? Do I need a mask thing? So while that's drying, let's just have a look at the difference between a horseshoe and a regular dipole. Uh, I've got the big doors open at the end. So here's a trick if you want to get on the low bands and don't quite have the space. Well, I guess there's two ways of doing it, isn't there? Reminder to buy some of those mechanics gloves. <laughs> uh, never mind. Uh, what was going to do? I was just going to look at, let me quickly model an inverted V and a horseshoe. I'll show you what I mean. All right, so on the left-hand side, I've got what looks like an inverted V, very low to the ground. But in fact, because it is top band, it's actually quite high. It's 11, the top of that is 11 metres high, 30 something feet. All right, and the ends are at two metres. 
right, and if we look at the far field plot, well, we'll just calculate that and look at the far field plot. We've got this bubble of RF, traditional, what you would expect, the low to the ground dipole for 80, 40, anything you like. And then the right hand side, I've got this kind of horseshoe and this is kind of what mine will look like. Big post in the middle of the field, coming down and then down, down to the fence again. So the high current point is right in the middle here, right? So I'll hit the calculate button there. Ignore the numbers and the SWR. Oh, let me just fix that for you. SWR resonant. It says about 1.946 is the best. 946. Incidentally, roughly the same as the other one. And also ignore the impedance. All right, if we raise this up 20 meters, it's the maths model. It's not actual reality. OK, it says here impedance 32 ohms, which would be fine. But anyway, we're at, uh, did we say 10 meters? No, we're adding two. That's right. So ignore, this is a maths error in a lot of modeling, which is well, for antennas that aren't ground mounted, a quarter of wavelength or less below the ground. Uh, above the ground. <laughs> Far field plots. So you can see it looks the same. If we just pick a random, uh, that's one, two, three, 30 degrees off the horizon and 30 degrees off the horizon. The dipole on the left hand side is one dB. No, it's not. It's half a dB more gain than the horseshoe. So, all right, half a dB in it. OK, that's it. There's not much gain for, I mean, let's say 10 degrees off the horizon where there would be dx. I'm getting minus 6.8. When a vertical would be about minus five. Well, no, it'd be slightly better actually. I'd be at minus, uh, where are we? Okay, so if we compared this to a full on vertical, this is six to seven dB less on long haul than it would be on a, on a vertical, even a loaded vertical, to be honest. But for us at M0XXT, the contest station, that's kind of fine. Right, all we need is three or four contacts in different zones for CQ worldwide into the US to get the multipliers. And that bubble will do the rest of Europe. You've got to remember in the in um, in our country, uh, well in Europe, there's like 50 countries. So poor Roly, if he's trying to get countries, he's got a bit of a problem. He's got to stretch all the way to Europe, which is why the big US stations have fixed beams right into um Europe, because there's 50 countries there, all the multipliers. It's good for the score and that sort of thing. But anyway, there's another way of doing this, remember, which is, and I'm, I'm not going to draw it for you, but let's just have a look at this horseshoe a minute and take the currents off. You can see the high current point is at, uh, at here. Take currents off. Instead of coming down and along, like if you want to do this for 40 metres, and we did this for 80, remember, we used 12 metre legs, right, but went and then came back right next to it. It's kind of a fold back. I used to call it linear loading, but it's not quite linear loading. I think we know it as linear loading. It's kind of fold back loading. So you go 12 meters one way, 12 and a half, I think it was. And then we went, came back about 10 meters. So you could really squeeze it in. Not only could you do linear loading, but you could horseshoe it as well. So it's actually not as difficult. If you think about it, to get on 80 meters then, 12 each side, if you've got six by, Six, 12 meters by, ideally 12 by 12, 10 by 10. You could just about fit uh, 80 meters in. The other way of doing 80, of course, is a slightly bigger than a 40, uh, a, a slightly bigger than a 40 meter loop, say 60 meter loop, all right? Any shape, square to fit it in and put some loading coils in and that, that will bring it down. Don't stick loading coils on a 40 meter delta loop though because now you are half wavelength and delta loops or square loops or one wavelength loops loaded don't work very well. Anyway, that's what we're doing here. Um, and let's see how the page getting on. This camera, by the way, is called a Pocket 2, uh, which works quite well. The When I bought it, I bought it with the little microphone. Now, to start with, I didn't like the microphone. 
Um, I said I didn't like it. I didn't like it because I didn't like it. I didn't like the sound quality. There's no diction in it. There was no top end. Anyway, I just left it in the box for a couple of years and then I tried it recently. You've probably noticed if you've been following my channel, I've been using this and um, it's kind of got a bit better. But occasionally I get a, a you know, like a interference thing. I, I don't know what it is. I, I asked ChatGPT and I've been on Reddit and stuff. And he says, oh, well, maybe it's some like Wi-Fi interference because I think it's Bluetooth. Uh, I can't, uh, yeah, I've been out in the field. I mean, there's a bit of Wi-Fi out there, but I've been out in the field. I get it there as well. So I think it's just a bit crap. And also the other thing is I've lost, you know, certainly half the capacity of the battery over the years. And it's non, you, oh, I mean, you can, I think I've seen a video where somebody took theirs apart and put a new battery in. So I've got to send it away, you know. I mean, you know, they expect you just to go, oh, well, this doesn't work anymore. I'll get the Pocket 3 now. And the Pocket 3 looks great, but this works, all right? Occasionally, it used to lose its... The, it's got a little gimbal head thing. Occasionally, I'll go... Brrr, bunk, and then the camera would shut off. That stopped. I don't know. Is that a software bug or something? Maybe I upgrade it with a firmware. I don't know. But where were we, all right? Because I've just put another coat on there. So ideas for compact antennas is linear loading, horseshoeing, and uh, and various shapes, all right? Because you can, particularly on the low bands, it's not like it's 10 meters, all right? Where you want a nice clean pattern like the CB bands. You know, for the 40 meters and below, where it's hard sometimes to find the space, just make up a shape. I remember years ago, I took two six meter lengths of wire. Now, what's that? 20 foot. And I put a little, like a two inch pipe or something. I put a few coils in it and connected it, put the analyzer on it. Uh, and I got a match on seven megahertz. And the trouble is when I do, if I ever do a coil and show you how to make something on here, everybody, well, not everybody, sorry. <laughs> There's some people who definitely want spoon fed. They go, well, how many turns and how big is this, that and the other? Very often, I've got no idea, mate. Yeah, I, I just, I go, oh, I don't know. I'll wind a bit on, see what happens, right? Because that's the science. That's the fun of it. That's the rediscovery. But um, you can, for 160 or 80, you can just, you know, halfway down, stick a coil, get a two-inch two piece of plumbing pipe or something. I've gone off using pure black just in case there's a carbon content in there and you do a bit of high power and it just heats up and whatever else. But grey pipe or white pipe should be fine. And uh, and, and hell, you know, I mean, I've, that's how the 12.4 works, you know. The the big, um, I, I think it was 110 turns, right, on a 12.4 to get it to a, the 80 metre band. There's been a loss there, by the way. I don't know there's a lot, right? couple of 3 dB but which is the only reason I went from the 12.4 to the 18 just to get that 3 dB because I'm trying to make this kind of contest grade if that's the right expression I'll get some more of this spray paint because I need four of these I think I bought 10 uh, of these poles by the way if you live in the Midlands and you want a yellow scaffold pole shout and um, you just take it away I think I paid 50 quid each for them or something quid by the way if you're in America is a pound all right which is about 120 something dollars uh, 120 cents 1.2 dollars 1 dollar 20 i think they say it. i think i mentioned on the last video we've got a big video coming up all right because we've got an electric winch now because the tower i want to put more weight on the tower and i want to add length to it and that's gonna it will be it's to the point where and i'm glad i didn't buy expensive eight to one pulleys now We'll use them for other projects. Uh, but um, I've got an electric winch, okay, which is specified. It winds out and in. If you buy a winch, by the way, some of them aren't wind out. They're like friction and stuff, but the motor actually engages and winds the tower down. So it's not, hopefully, going to go flying. It's a very strong winch, you know, 3,000 kilos. There we are. So we'll put that on its own scaffold pole dug into the ground, an anchor. Then we'll fit the winch. 
so when we tilt the tower off over we're not using the four square anchors we'll use a separate one if you haven't watched those videos i'll put a link in the description uh to the tower project because that's good watch a few minutes of it to get an idea of what i'm doing so that's going up another scaffold pole effectively another 20 foot and i want this three element for 20 meters and i want 15 on top i've checked the numbers and i understood a little bit the maths with chat gpt how much head load we've got and everything else and we're going to change out the g450 and put a gs 2800 in the bottom and i'm going to reinstall that side Barenko side mount to take the head load off the rotator because we've got uh, turnbuckles and Dyneema rope be 300 to 400 kilos downward force and I want that on the Yesu rotator bearing the 065 I think it's called not directly on the rotator and that's what we're doing <laughs> just before I go I spoke to uh, someone yesterday I just happened to be on the radio. Uh, I'm technically on holiday at the moment. And uh, I heard a guy, he was quite strong, 2E0ISD portable. Ian, he was out poting and stuff, you know. And I thought, oh, good. I didn't have the amplifier on, and I can't put more than 100 watts through this gear because otherwise I'll blow up this bandpass filter, which isn't quite commissioned yet, right? But it is working. I'll do a full technical breakdown of the shack one day but anyway i called him and he made his day because he was he really pleased to, to hear from me so there we are so sometimes sometimes i don't stream sometimes i actually respond to cq calls because if you call cq they will come all right if you never call cq and just complain good chance nobody's going to come all the best now see you next time hey bye for now <laughs>